What's going on guys? This is TM25MD, and uh, I don't have a duelist live for you guys per se, but I do have a replay analysis of a few games I've been trying out. Um, and I thought these were very good games, I don't know if I'll get uh, quality games like this um, if I recorded it just now with live gameplay. Um, but I'll, I'll be using a Lilith Wanderer list, which you know, some people have been using. Um, at the beginning of uh, the expansion, right? You know, people are trying out Ragnar, people are trying out Lilith because they both have um, cards to manipulate um, an early Wanderer, right? You know, on four mana in the likes of Flash Reincarnation and um, Darkfire Sacrifice. Apologize, my voice is a little <clears throat> is a little off today. Um, I gave a presentation and uh, I have an exam on Thursday so I've been um, you know pretty busy with that so uh, forgive me for my voice um, it's been pretty beat lately even though the weather is beautiful outside uh, here in Boston it's like it's almost 70 um, which is uh, a first rather so anyways um, let's hop into this wanderer list and uh, of course we'll be running Darkfire Sacrifice because you know any chance that we can get to get an early wanderer is not a bad thing, right? Um, pretty much uh, what you would see in any um, early game for wanderer, right? Blood Tier Alchemist, Healing, Ramp, Cryptographer, because um, you know getting bodies out is you know fantastic. Uh, Grasp of Agony for AoE. I did cut a Breath of the Unborn for it. Um, I felt like this wasn't, this was like too expensive and I couldn't develop while playing this card. So I ended up cutting it for Grasp of the Agony and it actually you know, paid dividends in a couple games. Um, Gibbet, I'm unsure about. I just have it in there because it's a two drop to fulfill my nine turn one plays. Um, speaking of which, I will do, be doing a deck building fundamentals um, video sometime this week, probably like on Friday after my exam, or Thursday evening after my exam. Um, so stay tuned for that, and I plan on doing some unlimited as well, so um, I think that'll be fun, especially with the $900, uh, in, uh, $900 prize pool for the official duelist tournament. Um, which is pretty great, you know, five hundred dollars for winning, and then you know, um, I think half for second, and then you know, some more for third and fourth, right? Um, so yeah, cash prizing, which is pretty good. So uh, I've been playing some unlimited. I haven't been playing that much uh, ranked until a little bit today because I, I wanted to try something new, right? And yeah, but anyways, back to the the deck. Give it. Every time I played this, it just really hasn't been forming for me. Um, Simply because probably people just don't want to throw their minion right in front of it, right? And lose it for free, right? Because, um, you know, whenever Gimlet kills something um, on my turn, uh, whatever it kills will summon another Gibbet. So why would you put it in range of Gibbet, right? Um, and obviously you can force those, you know, scenarios um, with careful positioning. But all in all, Gibbet's just eh for me, right? Um, even though I do like having this control shell. Um, for Wanderer, um, as I mentioned, actually I didn't mention it yet, Wanderer loses pretty badly to aggro and burn lists. Um, as you can see here, I do have a lot of top end. Um, even if I did lower the curve, that means I would have less removal options, which means Wanderer is less consistent without uh, sufficient removal options. So um, I did have to put the deck in that direction. Otherwise, um, it just would be less consistent. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, tie top end. Uh, let's move through healing mystic. Obviously, maw for some more removal and tempo plays. Uh, Nightmare opera. You know, the chance of me getting uh, mechazor uh, is pretty low, <laughs> but you know, it, there is a chance, and uh, this is it, right? Um, so why not? Punish, obviously, for removal. Uh, it's not bad with Lilith in general. Uh, you know, you can trade like a Wraithling in and you'll you'll get uh, some value from this punish, right? Um, Bound Tormentor for draw, Repulsor Beast for some soft removal, uh, Ritual Banishing for hard removal, 
uh, which goes well with, with uh, Sarlacc and Wraithlings and whatnot, um, it, which is why I have Sarlacc in here. It's annoying, uh, especially when it becomes a 2-2, right? Dealing two damage ping to whatever. Um, so I think it's pretty good in that regard. Uh, Zeraloth for some extra control, um, extra card draw, right? Um, and I found that Zeraloth was actually pretty good against decks that use a lot of spells, so like uh, Faye would be a big one, so you play this against Faye. And uh, it's not like she's not going to use Warbird. Um, otherwise, because if she does, usually people expect Bound Tormentor, so they'll test for the spell first, right? Because it's definitely not Skull Prophet, right? Um, so I play Zeraloth, they play their Warbird, I get a 2 2. Um, and if I get a. If I happen to have Mithron down, right? Those two mana 4 4s become 5 5s. A 5 5 for two mana. What else does. 5-5 five, five Fire Blazer, right? I think. Yeah, Fire Blazer is a 5-5. Five, five. It's not a great card, but you know, but it's for 2 mana, so I can play multiple of those for 2 mana, right? Fantastic, and that's why I like Zaraloth, um, Blood Tide Priestess, because you know, you can get some value from it, and plus I do have some top-end cards, which would benefit from having extra Wraithlings. So, um, you know, Variax, uh, is that it? Shadow Dancer would appreciate the bodies as well. Um, I think it's the only ones that incorporate Wraithlings. Oh, Black Solus, which is a favorite of mine. This could be any other 5 drop, but I feel like since I do have a little bit of Wraithling synergy going on, uh, why not throw it in there, right? I think I did have a game uh, that I'll feature today um, that did involve Black Solus, right? So uh, there's Black Solus in there. So Blood Tide Priestess Desolator for some, you know, a little bit of chip damage, you know, sustainability is always good a thing. So Lightbender for some Dispel. This could easily be an Ephemeral Shroud um, if you want the lower mana cost minion, but I think having the, the AoE Dispel is pretty good, um, which is also uh, why I run EMP, so having all the Dispel in the world is never bad. Um, what Reaper of Nine Moons and Dancing Blades. Uh, removal, high tempo play removal right here. Uh, Reaper of the Nine Moons is always a fantastic card, regardless of whether it's buffed or not from Wanderer. Uh, stealing my opponent's minions is great. Um, <clears throat> Shadow Sister Kalina for some extra healing, um, so we can get to that late game where we can play our late game cards, which we do have quite a bit of. Um, we have Moon Rider, which is technically a 7 mana play. Uh, Vorpal Reaver, which is also pretty good. Um, EMP, Variax, Revenant. Um, you can easily throw in a Saber Spine Alpha in the deck if we wanted the extra burst damage, but uh, I, I like the control feel and I like the Abyssian cards for some color synergy as well. So, um, though Alpha can work as removal too, so um, something to be considered. Uh, speaking of removal, um, Shadow Dancer, you know, it's good for you know sustain, kind of like Desolator, uh, but with more of a condition and it has a bigger body, of course. Um, Paragon for some removal, Betrayal for some potential burst damage. Um, good against factions like Songhai where they like to backline their minions. Uh, you can punish that. Um, like Kalos, you know, he plays a Zendo behind him and then ends his turn. Play Betrayal, you know, try and get some damage from that. Um, Bone Reaper, again, more removal. That's why I think is pretty good as I mentioned in the last uh, Wanderer video. Um, it's been pretty good. Um, I don't think I used it today, but um, you know, clearing something and potentially doing three face damage while developing a four or five flyer is pretty uh, pretty high tempo in my opinion. Jax True Sight developing five two two range is pretty dang good, and I think this is Moon Rider is probably the one of my favorite cards to add into this Wanderer list. Um, simply because right, you play Wanderer, then you play this on seven. Um, not only do you get a 7-7, seven, seven, but you get two 2-2s two and a 5-5, five, five, um, which is pretty good value if you ask me. Um, so your opponent has to deal with that, so uh, not many cards can deal with you know large minions like that. Very few, just like Painter and uh, Parian's Claim are the only ones I can think of off the top of my head that can deal with a combination like this. Um, so Moonrider. Pretty good. Uh, Mithron Wanderer obviously is why we're playing this deck. Uh, Necrotic Sphere for some extra hard removal if we get overwhelmed. Uh, Vorpal, as I mentioned earlier, EMP, Variax, and Revenant as our top end. And uh, yeah, this deck's been uh, pretty decent so far. 
Uh, I think I only played seven games with it. I haven't played that much uh, ranked recently. It's been mostly <laughs> unranked, right? Uh, yeah, this Vitruvian, Agro Vitruvian, you know, with the Cumulo Nimbus and, and Phalaceus is stupid. So as you saw, I just won 10 games in a row uh, with it on unranked. Uh, but anyways, uh, what should we go first? Dragal, as I, as I mentioned earlier, aggro list, burn list, just beat up on, um, on, on Wanderer list. So if you're playing aggro, or if you've lost to Wanderer a lot, um, or more times than you would have liked, then uh, play some aggro, play some aggro Xerox, play some Starhorn, and uh, most definitely you'll have a high win rate against Wanderer. Uh, this one was actually exciting, so I'll show this one first. This was actually one of the longer ones, unfortunately, but it was very entertaining, uh, to say the least. Um, so we're going up against Swarm Broom, uh, Stratagos, if you will. So we got to be on the lookout for Jax, um, possible Jax from him. This is where Breath of the Unborn would actually be a little bit better, better because it deals with uh, Jax True Sight. And um, I did want to hold on to Varyax. I was skeptical to hold on to Varyax because it would... Variax beats, um, it, it should be, uh, Swarm's Brom, uh, his minions, you know, right, if he just starts off with one ones, or one mana minions, two mana minions, uh, it should beat it. So I ended up playing, replacing the Variax, so I thought it was way too early, I think I need to develop a better mid game, and, uh, develop the Celebrant and uh, give it. Call out a turn, defensive gibbet, so if he wants to take this tile, put anything on the tile, uh, I can kill it. Um, I honestly don't know what he's playing, so I, I imagine it's just standard. Uh, well, at this point, I, I know what he played because this game's over, but I didn't know what he was playing. But he actually reveals Soul Pontiff, which is actually pretty good because it does count to the, towards the trial. Um, and he actually clears the gibbet. I didn't see that coming, honestly. Um, so, kind of punished there. Uh, not much I can do other than just to, uh, I mean in hindsight maybe I could have just stepped here with my general, moved my guy back and played um, the Reaper of the Nine Moons right here. Uh, but I wanted to threaten the tile, so I, I played it right here. Um, so maybe I should have moved here with my general body blocks and uh, put my, I ended up getting a Silver Red Knight which was pretty good. Um, played it right here uh, in safety. but. I didn't want to take too much damage, right? So that's why I moved here, so only one of his minions could hit me. Because um, if he did that, plus this ge the, plus general's hit, uh, I would be already down to this, you know, like 17. I would take in 5 or something. 17 or 19. And plus, I do want to get around him, right? Trains. I don't know if you guys heard that, but the trains here in Boston. Um, so he gets another Soul Pontiff, and we're taking a lot of damage. Part of the reason why I didn't want to go there. Um, because I've taken a lot of damage, so thankfully I do have the Grasp of Agony. And uh, we can definitely clear. In retrospect, I probably should have played my Silver Guard Knight right here, so he can't uh, just kill my, um, <clears throat> my Maw for free and move over here. Um, so, yeah, maybe I should have moved it. I don't know. Because um, in retrospect, I do play Wander right here. So I guess it balances out. It keeps my Silver Guard Knight alive for one more turn, so I guess that's kind of good. Uh, I don't know what was correct there, but um, we'll see. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah, this is easy time to just play Wander right in front of them, try and, you know, Stop him from using that BBS. At this point, he only played eight more, so he can't play Stratagos this coming turn. He needs to play a bunch of minions in order to uh, uh, get rid of it. So, and I decided to stand here. You know, I want to be behind Brom. I don't want to be provoked, right? So, if you want to beat Brom, um, get behind him <laughs> so he can't provoke you, right? So, yeah, just trade his minions in here. So, maybe keeping the Silver Guard Knight out of range was correct, so. You know, he cleared a bunch of his minions, which I think was uh, pretty good. I expected a Jax true sight at this point, plus it's BPS, and that would just set up for a really good um, Stratagos the following turn. I honestly couldn't do it. Actually, I could do something about it with uh, 
the Sunset Paragon, but he actually reveals Titan, um, which is totally unexpected. Um, but thankfully, we do have the answer with uh, with uh, Sunset Paragon. And he actually draws two cards. Actually, no, just one card because it hits itself. Um, that actually draws a card. So if you ever use like Rebuke or whatever on a, a Sojourner, um, it will draw cards. So since you can't draw anymore, I just mill on the Sojourner, which is not the worst thing in the world. And uh, I think I just developed the Azure Herald um, simply because you know, it's better than I think it's better than playing two two twos, right? It's two health that heals me, which I, I was getting pretty low. I was at eleven. Um, so. This is BBS. I don't know if he has enough yet. Nope, he only has nine. So breaking this artifacts uh, is you know the most important thing I can do right now, um, which I think I can if he doesn't play that many minions. But uh, he has a lot of cards in hand, so he can. Um, normally, I would keep the bones uh, bone reaper against Rome, but. Uh, they all have force fields, so it's going to be tough to get rid of it. So I replace it, and I have the top deck <laughs> revenant, so I was very lucky on my end. Um, so my play here is just to break the artifact, right? And uh, pretty much just deal, uh, which is this 12 to him, I think. Put him down to 5. And since we saw a Titan, that means no Trinity Oath. Uh, the only sources of healing he can run would be like you know Azure Herald, Healing Mystic, Scintilla. Um, I don't think he can play anything else that heals, not to my knowledge. Emerald Rejuvenator I guess, but you wouldn't run that in uh, in in Stratagos in my opinion. So, and the only way he can deal with this would be like Arclight Sentinel, but it uh, has three health so it doesn't die to that. Maybe Blood Tear, but again those don't really contribute to the trial, so again not to the best here. So he actually ends up taking another four. Um, so if we had one point of damage or a Desolator, we would just win the game. So Blood Tear, Betrayal, uh, Blood Tear, Betrayal, and pretty much anything just kills him right here. So um, I think this is a perfect turn to start developing Moonrider. Um, see if my swarm can beat his swarm is really what it comes down to, or if I top deck uh, Betrayal or uh, Bloody Alchemist. And I get the Furiosa, which is actually pretty good. Allows these guys to become 3-3s, three um, which is pretty powerful. And uh, I would imagine he just played his son, second son right here, uh, because he intends on playing Stratagos this turn. And this actually becomes a 6-mana minion. Um, like... Uh, I don't know, what else is six? Elix Stormblade, uh, Solarius, what else is six mana? I think that's it. I don't think War Exorcist is six mana, I think that's only five. Um, but he ends up getting the Elix Stormblade. I was hoping it was Solarius, but I wasn't that lucky. So I'd rather get the most I can from this Moonrider, because I'm unfortunately I have to trade it into this Elix Stormblade, otherwise it becomes an Excelsior, or excuse me, a seven mana minion like Indominus. And I don't want that, right? And uh, I took a little bit of a risk there, but I still think it worked out in the end. Um, and I get my, my Bone Reaper back and we can clear this uh, Subforger before it becomes any bigger. Um, or four mana minion, right? Which could be something like, uh, I don't know, the sister, sun sister, sister OP, it could be sunriser, anything. So if he decides to kill my Bone Reaper right here, he loses two minions, which I think is fantastic because I can just start setting up Swarm. And I actually draw my other, uh, my one and only very axe. <laughs> so, um, my plan now is, and his last card was Titan, which kind of stinks, uh, cause, which means I can't win with Desolator or um, or Blood Tear Alchemist. I have to win with uh, Betrayal, which he's playing around, which is, uh, I think he realized that uh, that is one way I can win. Um, so, with Furiosa on the field, these guys become 4 4s. We can trade this into Excelsius and clear this Iron Cliff Guardian with health to spare. And I think we should have it um, if we just play our uh, our Grandmaster Variax, right? 
I was thinking about moving this forward to you know try and get in on him because he only has two minions. Uh, but I think just uh, developing a very and winning inevitably, inevitably, um, was the way to go. Right, he's one card. Can't draw unless he has hilarious or sojourners, which he did mill one of them and played another one. So I don't know if he's playing three. And he actually gets the second sun, so that becomes another Elix Stormblade, of course. Uh, but Solarius would have been equally as bad. So this turn I just developed Vorpal Reaver and uh, my awesome Blood Bounce spell. <laughs> Once I just start generating minions, so Furiosa plus uh, awesome Bloodbound minions, so they just become huge, and his swarm can't keep up with my swarm, so I know I should have the inevitable win. Get the Scintilla, which kind of stinks, which means I can't kill him with... I mean, I couldn't kill him anyways, but he's starting to heal, which I don't think is uh, good for me, so I just need to make sure that my swarm is better than his, um, which I think it is, given that uh, he can't reach this Furiosa, so all my Wraithlings are just going to get huge, um, and I think I should ultimately just win this one game. I did mess up a little bit here. Uh, you'll probably recognize what it is. I decided just to go all in, because I'll just keep generating big minions every turn. Uh, yes, yeah, so I hit before I played my, uh, my minion, so... Uh, my Blood Tide Priestess, so I miss out on a Wraithling there. Oh well. I just played my uh, Wraithling, my Blood Tide Priestess Sentry. And, you know, he has to deal with all this. This becomes a lot of minions. Um, he has one card in hand. I don't know what he can do. This becomes a six mana minion at the end of the turn, which kind of stinks, so I need to get rid of the big guys first. And they all have Force Field. He actually goes for Tempest, which is a little bit peculiar, but um, it actually makes sense now because his last card was the Shroud, which means he's able to get rid of the Horrible Reaver. Um, so. But I think he messed up a little bit there. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if he could have reached with this um, Peacekeeper. So I think he should have hit with the Peacekeeper first and then Tempest. I don't know if he could have done that, though. Not quite sure. Dancing Blade's not a Betrayal. Uh, it looks like he's not playing around Betrayal. Um, maybe he's just like, oh, it's unlikely. He only has one copy in his deck. Uh, or he might not even be running it. So, yeah. Uh, I think I have this one game here. One, right? I can clear the Zion Cliff. I can clear the Prominence. And all he has really here is just, uh, Scintilla. And I don't want him to heal up many more than he should, you know, especially out to the point outside of a uh, Betrayal range, right? So I just dispel it, because why not? And, uh, my minions are just huge. I think the game's already over. Um, I'm generating, what, 7-7s seven every turn? <laughs> Two 7-7s? Seven which is a bit ridiculous on top of what I can generate from Blood Tide Priestess. I don't think there was a lethal here that I, I could have seen. But, nah, that definitely wasn't. I was out of range. Yeah, so developing 2 7 is a, a bit ridiculous. <laughs> So, we get, finally get a Desolator, but I don't think it uh, matters too much. We should have him just look at all of our guys. Whatever he decides to play will die, most likely, to a combination of attacks from any sort of Wraith Links. I guess he's just hoping to get a bunch of these guys to hopefully that I don't get a way to kill him and just try and kill me from here. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I have a you know, pretty much an easy lethal and I replaced him too. I had lethal regardless, but Repulsive Beast was, uh, even if I didn't, uh, Repulsive Beast sealed the deal. But I could have just, you know, come here, kill this, kill that, and then this guy comes down, hits him for seven. 11 I don't know I, I didn't see how much attack that one had so uh Variax coming in clutch in wonder so a little bit of a top end oh, we actually went down in rank um while reviewing that match and I'll show you the weakness of this list right it loses two straight uh, aggro the two losses I had were against aggro 
Um, I did beat two burn lists actually. I beat Burn Fey with Flame Blood Warlocks and um, you know mentors and cryptographers and whatnot. And uh, I also beat a Hydro Songhai. Um, when I lost to Dragal because Dragal is very good. But this this match was very close to say the least. So what is this? Azure Help. So I just play uh, my healing Mystic here. It's an easy play. <clears throat> Knowing Adrigal, he might be running uh, cards like Maw and Blood Tear. Definitely Blood Tear, but uh, maybe not Maw. I lose my Black Solace, which kind of sucks. Um, because uh, you know, I, I like Black Solace. I thought I would do well in this match, uh, especially with the 7 health and uh, less attack, meaning that uh, it doesn't die to rebuke. If you play it naked without uh, any blood bound spells, so I just decide to you know um, back up and take it slow. That's the only way I can beat him is to keep my health pool high and take it slow. Unfortunately, uh, if he has a blood tier alchemist, he can just uh, get rid of my uh, desolator, which kind of stinks. So he can play another blaze hound and mill me another card, so I don't think it's that bad. He does have the Blood Tear Alchemist, which kind of stinks. And uh, I think this I have to play um, my Sunset Paragon, right? Obviously. Uh, because that's a 4 3 and that's a 4 3. He's also just, you know, uh, burning his hand a little bit so he can draw some more cards, which is fine. So, not the best Sunset Paragon because he can easily just trade into it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, not the, not the easiest. Uh, not the best trades, right? I'm not in the best position. He can usually just mechanic here, uh, which he does, which kind of stinks, but there's not much I could have done. It was either, you know, take eight and stop. I, I couldn't even stop the ramp, to be honest. Um, maybe I could have. Not quite sure. Um, but I just have to, you know, play around. Call out a turn. So I don't think I'm in a bad spot here, right? I, I mean, I'm down to 15. But uh, I have a Dancing Blades, a couple minions, I can play Wanderer next turn and try and get a gain control of the board. Uh, but he draws first, fine. And he gets uh, another Mechanter and another Greater Fortitude. I was like, oh, Mechanter's not bad, this still lives. Um, but second Greater Fortitude and uh, he's easily regained control of the board, which is sucks on my part <laughs> so I obviously have to whip that away I don't see the point in using hard removal on it right now especially if I want to develop uh, Thunderhorn and uh, a mystic of my own or my not a mystic uh, this guy my blood bound spell <laughs> shadow dancer is very nice here I can easily make a nice comeback turn and uh, we'll deal some, some pretty good damage to him. And he has his third Mechanter, which I think uh, is a bit lucky. You know, three Mechanters in, and uh, he's only played three sources of draw, which kind of stinks on my end. Okay, so if he had Decimus Tech Spikes, I couldn't heal around it here, right? Um, I couldn't play around Decimus Tech Spikes. Because um, if he had it last turn, he should have played it. And that was lethal, right? Um, I could play. I could play the Bone Reaper, but I just lose to Tech Spikes. Um, so that was out of the option. So my only real play here. I mean, I could have played Bone Reaper and heal. That might have been safest. Um, but then I just lose to like, um, like two Tech Spikes or something. I don't know. Because he, he certainly has one Tech Spikes in hand. Uh, he just doesn't have Decimus. Or the other way around, one or the other way around. But knowing Dragal, he keeps the draw in hand. Um, so he, I'm sure he has a Decimus in hand. So I have to heal up here. So my play is uh, Azure Herald and uh, this guy. So I heal up for six. So he has no more Mechanters. So it really comes out to if he has Decimus Tech Spikes or not. So there's the Tech Spikes, as I said. Second blood tier, and he did have the two tech spikes, which I mean, I couldn't, 
even if I played Bone Reaper, I, I would have lost the two text spikes. So he probably drew the second text spikes off the uh, and the blood tier, one or the other, off the um, uh, the first text spikes, right? Or he had one in the hands. So he definitely drew one of them. I'm not sure. I'll probably look over the replay after um, from his point of view. But as I said, the matchup was in my favor, especially me going second, right? Um, it wasn't in my favor. Um, you know, an aggro list, burn list going first is just really strong, right? So, um, but I thought I did okay, despite him <laughs> drawing, you know, two tech spikes. I mean, granted, he didn't draw Decimus tech spikes, so he could have won a lot easier, or a lot earlier. Um, but the three Mechanthers, I think, were bigger than him not having Decimus, right? It just wiped my board and did four extra damage that I that I wanted uh, to my face, because I could have healed, right, with the, the Shadow Dancer and the Azure Herald, but... Three Mechanters, I think, is what won him the game. Not the tech spikes or the Decimus, it was the three Mechanters, because that was four damage I could have avoided. Because, right, if that four damage didn't go to my face, I would have survived Decimus tech spikes, um, without a doubt. And he probably would have had to develop something smaller um, and out of the way or run away, um, of which I can start capitalizing on that. So, um, he did have two tech spikes, so he could have done something like draw a second flash and play Decimus and, you know, win with two tech spikes. Well, at least I would have had a better chance, but three Mechanters <laughs> won him the game there. Uh, what do we go over? This was another aggro list that, you know, I just get hit hard, but I almost had a chance of winning. Um, my opponent's last card was a uh, lot of air, which he replaced into, so that felt bad. No point in watching that one. Uh, this is basically the same thing. I played, I think, the best I could, um, given the circumstances, but... Uh, I just got outdrawn. That was how it was. Um, this one was fun. This was against uh, mid range list, Zoran. Um, maybe even Tempo, because uh, some of the cards in here uh, indicate that, or suggest that it could be a Tempo uh, Zoran list. <clears throat> so I got the ramp, which is actually pretty good. So um, outside of Martyrdom and uh, Draining Wave, can't get rid of this Celebrant turn one, so I just play the Celebrant. Um, and I keep the Dust Whaler. Actually, no, did I keep? I think I replaced it into the Dust Whaler. But uh, I think playing the Sunforge Knight is uh, pretty good. Get rid of the Sunset Paragon. Most of Zoran's minions have less health or have less attack than, uh, than health, so. Um, I just play the uh, Reapers and Mind Moons here, so it stays out of, you know, whatever. Two minions. He decides to, you know, like he could come here and play two minions here and do something to this. If there's like a shroud or a lightbender, um, so I don't know why I put it here. Oh, so it's a little bit closer. So if it does get like sun bloomed or something, it's a little bit closer to the fight. Um, it's actually war exorcist, which kind of stinks, but we do have the the answer to both of these minions, right? Which is interesting. This is a cool card. Uh, replace the Dust Whaler. Um, it's a little bit early for that. So I do find a two drop, which is nice. So it makes this play uh, work out perfectly. And I can uh, play my Furiosa and call it a turn. And clear this and play around Holy Immolation, like Sunrise Cleric and Holy Immolation. And uh, yeah, pretty good. So he can't sun bloom this and this. Uh, he can't holy emulation this and my face. Uh, so he ends up just you know taking the risk and saying, "Hey, you won't pull a war exorcist. You'll just get something crappy." And <laughs> he was right because <laughs> um, you know I think we saw did we see a silver guard knight? I'm not quite sure, uh, but we did see a war exorcist and obviously sunrisers and sunforge lancers. Um, so we could have taken those from him. Maybe he only had one like, more extra system in his deck. But I'm willing to bet he had more than one. But uh, he took the risk and uh, he got it. <laughs> got probably one of the worst things we could have gotten. Um, maybe I should have played the uh, Tide Priest. It's a little bit safer here. Because uh, this plays into Holy Invasion. I, had, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I should have played it up here. Because at least right here. Uh, actually... Yeah, 
because he has healing mystic holy relation which kind of stinks kind of stinks but uh i think we're okay we can definitely deal with it right with uh blood to alchemist we're getting pretty low but uh, i think we can sustain ourselves uh, pretty well so we can remove this unfortunately we won't be able to play a blood brown spell and play a big um a bigger black solus but uh Fortunately, I have to take the 11 here and just body block. I just didn't want him to get up here and start hitting me some more, so that's why I put my Black Souls right here. Yeah, I know he could have hit this, play Holy Emulation, and deal be even more damage to me. Um, but uh, I, I want to make him work for it, right? So he ends up just going face, which kind of stinks. And uh, looks like he's just trying to close me out um, by playing the Sintail here. Otherwise, I wouldn't have played it unless I had the Blood Pound spell active. So I'm just going to whip that. In retrospect, actually, I should have... Uh... Actually, I just didn't want him to draw, so I ended up... I mean, he's gonna... he's at such high health, and he has more healing, so I didn't see the point in, you know, killing this one right away. I'd rather stop him from drawing well, right? So that's what I did. Get rid of the spell jammer. I, I valued him drawing um, more, so uh, yes, yeah, so I, I play my my desolator here, trying to gain some health, and uh, so he can't just like come down here and hold him late. I mean, he could, but um, if he did, he just couldn't hit me. So <clears throat> he has Imperion's claim, which kind of stinks. Uh, but that's his entire turn, and uh, he ends up just deciding to go face and complete this, completely ignore this uh, Furiosa, which I disagree with, um, to be honest. Maybe he thought he could close me out and he decided to take that risk, especially um, before I can get Wanderer down. And he already used one claim. So I was debating on playing uh, the Moonrider versus the, the Wanderer, but I think uh, if there was a time to play Wanderer, it would be now. Um, so I decided to get a little bit closer with this Furiosa, uh, try and make it a little bit relevant in trading if I have to, because I'm getting pretty low. He's at a pretty good amount of HP. Uh, if he has another claim, that'll kind of stink. Um, but I think we can just start developing uh, Moon Rider and uh, getting value there. Plays Trinity Oath. Not the the worst thing in the world. It's a pretty slow turn for him. So two slow turns in a row uh, is just the opportunity I needed to try and come back to this game and. Uh, Play Circle of Life, get rid of that, so he's pretty healthy. Yeah, so pretty good for him. But uh, this is a perfect time to play uh, play Moonrider. This is why I think Moonrider is fantastic in War um, and Wanderer. Because if you give me an inch to come back in this game, like with a couple slow turns, such as uh, the last couple turns that he like he just played, then I can punish it by developing a lot of me. And so he this demands him having another claim, right? I played it right here so you can't just claim this area and start coming down this way. So if he has to claim it has to be up here. So I think we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, place Tempest. I guess he's just trying to burn me out but uh, I do have Desolator um, which I think is great. And yeah. And I have Bone Reaper so I can provoke, I can heal. Um, I have the whole nine yards. And he has Azure Herald which is cool. And uh, Healing Mystic, which is also cool. And he kills my, my guy, which uh, kind of stinks, which means I can't clear this uh, artifact unless I top deck EMP. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can't get rid of the artifact this turn, so I have to play the EMP this turn. And uh, get a full surround. Like so. I was thinking about moving here, but uh, I feel like he needs to work for a lethal with a Sunriser. But uh, he's already played one, he's played a bunch of uh, healing mystics and Azure Heralds, and I already stole one of his Azure Heralds, so um, couldn't kill me. But he gets a Circle of Life as his last card, but what can he do for one mana minion? Afterglow. You need the blood tier to win. Or a uh you need even have enough mana to play blood tier. So we actually have Lethal on board here. This is 24 damage. 
uh, 26 if you include, include Desolator. So, a uh, very close game. Uh, very close indeed. But we're able to, if you give Wander a little bit of you know room to control and develop, they'll, they'll take that any day of the week and uh, punish you. So the way to beat Wander is to do what he did at the beginning. Constantly pressure me. And, but the moment he just gave me an inch to take a, two slow turns, I was able to develop a board and it was just, uh, he needed like exact combos in order to win, uh, which he didn't have. Um, so that's the episode. My voice is going to die if I keep talking, so I apologize like, once again. So uh, deck fundamentals, deck building fundamentals, I'll do sometime this week, probably Thursday evening or Friday, um, Friday, whenever on Friday, <laughs> um, after my exam. And then uh, maybe I'll do some Fire Emblem Heroes over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday. Um, so I think that'll be fun to watch. It's very similar to Duelist, uh, obviously different in some, in some regard, but there is, you know, a board um in units obviously and you get to control them and uh it's pretty fun so i uh, hope you guys enjoyed and i'll catch you guys next time bye guys